Welcome, everyone. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group meeting. It's the first day of February 2023. Thanks for attending. So topics for today, uh, we had included security reviews for UX pull requests. Tim's probably not here. Vadek, is it OK if I put you on the on as that topic? Yeah, for sure. OK, collecting general feedback on UI and UX regressions was a topic we had before. What's happened recently in UI improvements? What's coming in additional ones? Uh, and improving keyboard usability. Christina, I'm prone to move this one higher on the list to be sure we get to it, if that's OK. Yeah, I have a short update, not a huge one. Oh, number. good. OK, sure. great. Well, so then I'm going to move it upwards. I'm sorry. OK, then, Vadek, we had a topic on fe user feature flags from the past. Is that something you would like to do further in this meeting or no? I don't think there is a lot of discussion to have there. The pull request is still waiting to be merged. It was mainly reviewed and partially approved. So it's mainly a matter of time for people to review it. So I had a topic to add um, close to the bottom of the list, which is deprecation of Jenkins JS libs. It's a uh, the it has something to do with the work I've been doing on the pipeline Groovy plugin. Great. All right. So deprecation of Jenkins JavaScript libraries and pipeline Groovy plugin uh, improvement work. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. And specifically here, it's Ace Editor, Moment.js, and others, right? Yeah. Okay, great. And okay, and Uli, is the yes, app bar I, ready for build actions? Yeah. Thanks for proposing it. That's good. So I'm not sure if that makes sense if uh, neither uh, Jan or uh, yeah, Tim is there, but we will see. And, and I think let's, if you're okay with it, let's put it, keep it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. and, and we may decide to defer it to next meeting. That's okay as well. Yeah, fine. Great. All right. Let's do that then. And let's see, Kayla. Okay, good. All right. Any other topics that need to be on the agenda? Okay. Then security reviews for UX pull requests. Vadek, are you okay if I open this one? Yeah, that was a good. Thank you. All right. So as you can see there, there are only two pull requests that are waiting for a security review. Both of them are mainly stalled in terms of the development. So we are not reviewing them if they are not ready to be reviewed in a sense. If you open the first one, it will be especially interesting to see there something that I would like to avoid for the future is mainly, yeah, if the browser is loading, <laughs> it's mainly, it was approved. But there were some changes that were added to the pull request. We need to have the need security review label to be bring back at that point. Otherwise, we could have some vulnerability introduced as well. At the bottom of the page, uh, you will see <laughs> as a <laughs> potential feature um, that there was a vulnerability introduced after the security review. So it's a bit lucky that we were able to review uh, to review that and to catch the, the vulnerability. But it just to highlight the fact that if we introduce a vulnerability in a pull request, it could be very expensive for the security team to do a security release for Jenkins core compared to just waiting a bit to review a pull request and doing that during the pull request life, I would say. Right, yeah, I'm, I apologize that my page is not, I see this, the bar moving across the screen still, Vadek, and I'm not sure what's going on with GitHub today. You know, the, the download bar at the top is just an indicator. There is no real information behind it. Oh, you can oh go okay. Back to the so, regular agenda and uh, do not care about the data. I passed okay. the information I wanted, so that's the main point. Okay, great. Thank you. Any concerns from any others on how security reviews are progressing? I, I like the suggestion, the recommendation, please ask again for security review. I assume that's what you're envisioning there is that the, the plugin or the, that the 
author of the pull request should put the need security review label on again after they've made significant changes. Yep. And I would say not necessarily a substantial change, but just something that could be interesting for us. Meaning if you corrected a typo, we do not care. But if that typo is a HTML part that is using a variable, please ask for a review. Good, that makes sense. So apply your judgment as the author of the, the pull request to decide, yes, I'd like another review. And in case of doubt, just ask. Great, all right. When in doubt, ask. Or when in doubt, set the label and you'll clear the label if you think it doesn't justify it? Totally. Okay. Or set the label and rely on security to on the security team to clear it. Good, thank you. Anything else on security reviews? Okay, next topic then was collecting general feedback on UI and UX regressions. And I believe the last time we discussed it was continuing to use JIRA as the collection point. Were there other things that we need to discuss here on this topic, or should I drop it from future agendas? I think we can drop it. Okay, great. I would Next say the general feedback there is also related to the user feature flag. If you are able to provide a feature that is broken, you just disable the flag. And that information could be collected in the future automatically with the telemetry so that we know if a feature is broken for some people or not. Looking forward to have the pull request being merged to apply some telemetry. Good. Okay, makes sense. Anything else on general feedback? Okay, next topic then, improving keyboard usability. Christina, now, Christina, do you want to share your screen? What What would you like? Um, Not this meeting. So a okay. bit of a background on this. So we, we know that we have a few accessibility issues to resolve um, on CI in general. Um, some of them originate from the open source. Um, I meet tomorrow with Jake. We have to work out a few details just around how we want to handle um, pull requests from the community and, and work out our process there before I start. I want to get that sorted before I start to <laughs> create tickets and, and bug people. Um, none of the changes that are needed are heavy lifts. It's all front end facing um, around keyboard accessibility, mostly um, for this round anyways. Um, and I can certainly provide guidance around what's needed. Um, so there will be tickets coming. Um, we're working out our own process around that right now, just because it, it needs to kind of align with some work that we're going to do internally as well. So they're coming, plans getting put in place, and then I'll, I'll create tickets for, for the open source. Great. And of course, like I'm, I'm, I'm very open to feedback on, on how that works down as we go to, 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 to uh, flesh out a process that works for all of us. Great. So, so I think what I'm hearing is we can look forward to some initial reports of, hey, here are some accessibility issues yeah. detected, and yeah. later we'll look forward to some pull requests, and here are the pull requests that resolve some of those accessibility issues. Yeah, we have a laundry list of requests from clients, um, and some of them are issues that are more pressing than others. So for this initial round, we're really looking to just deal with the kind of the show stopping um, issues where say a user who's relying on accessible technologies literally cannot navigate. Um, we're looking to fix those first and then we can work through the kind of the, I don't wanna call them nice to haves. They're all, you know, we're supposed to <laughs> accommodate them, but the ones that aren't quite as, um, aren't roadblocks in the same way. Great. Super. Thank you. Anything else or any questions from others? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Next topic then was what's happened recently in UI improvements, and I don't have a story to tell here. Are there others who would like to highlight recent changes or things that need to be discussed? I believe there was a single recent fix, and it was related, if I remember correctly, Uli, in app bar, right, in some portion that involved an app bar. But I, I don't remember the details. Actually, I don't remember the details. Oh, okay. So I've seen that a fix was in, in 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 the last release, but actually I don't know what's exactly broken there. Okay. Great. And the what's coming in UI improvements. I know that Jan and Tim had been working on further removal steps for Yahoo UI and that there are some things in flight there. Um, I think it's a good lead in to our next topic, the deprecation of the JavaScript libraries, unless there are others who have topics they want to discuss on what's coming in UI. So Basel, let's take the next one, deprecation of Jenkins JavaScript libraries. You want to share with us what, what you've learned and what you've proposed, et cetera? Yeah, and it's not just me working on this. Um, it started back a couple of months ago when uh, the pipeline stage view plugin was updated to remove its dependency on handlebars. Uh, and since then, uh, it's also been updated to remove its dependency on moment JS. And then I've also yesterday propose a change to remove the ACE editor from Pipeline Groovy. These were the last three big dependencies on the Jenkins JS libs plugin, um, which is dates back to 2015 and has not really been maintained since then. Um, so we've been deprecating uh, these older library plugins like Moment.js, Handlebars, Hopefully, AC editor will be deprecated soon as well um, once we stop using it from Pipeline Groovy. Um, so the only thing I wanted to highlight here in this meeting was um, there's still some bits and pieces left in Jenkins core that have something to do with this subsystem. And I, I haven't figured out what they are or if they're still needed. But the less and less we depend on this the less likely I think that they are needed. So um, maybe it, it very well might be the case that once we rip out um, ACE editor from Pipeline Groovy, I think that's the last or close to the last plugin that's using this subsystem. We might also be able to remove the bits and pieces that are in Jenkins core that only exist to support this framework. Um, now, uh, I'm not really sure one way or another. So that's why I wanted to bring this to more people's attention um, since I don't know much about this, but I think there, I think there's more cleanup that can be done. Um, and this has some security impact because these libraries are all pretty old. And even if none of them are vulnerable right now, they put us at risk for future vulnerabilities just because of their age. So it would be good to get rid of these little bits and pieces if we can. I think there's also still a plugin that's using this that nobody has fixed yet, which is the GitHub, um, one of the GitHub plugins, forget which one. Uh, one of I think one of the GitHub plugins is still using um, one of these um, Jenkins JS libs plugin from 2015. So you know we could decide if we if we think that it's important enough to to patch or if we could leave it behind. But I think so. Th there's there's still more cleanup. We're not done with the cleanup work, is what I'm saying. So there's still plugins left, even though they're obscure, that are that are using this stuff. And then there's still bits and pieces in core. So um, definitely something that we'd like to to get fully deleted so that we don't have to worry about it. Great. Uh, does that mean that we don't use moment.js anymore or just the JS lips uh, wrapper? Just the wrapper. So oh, if you're, okay. if you're doing your own, most, most of actually, you know, what I did with pipeline groovy was it already had its own webpack build 
So I just integrated a CE editor into that. Oh. And in general, that's essentially an equivalent to Jenkins JS libs is stuff like these modern uh, technologies like Webpack. They're doing the same thing as what Jenkins JS libs was doing or similar. Um, but it's just that these are now standardized industry-wide rather than something that our project developed seven years ago that's not maintained anymore. Mm -hmm. And one thing would, would be good uh, if you can have a look at the developer documentation, if we still have some references uh, to use JS libs, I think. Um, yeah, there's always docs. Yeah, there's, there's more cleanup that needs to be done here. Yeah. So th we're de definitely looking for people to help with uh, cleaning up some of the long tail of this. Um, you know, I think I definitely, uh, I definitely put a, a dent in the problem with pipeline groovy plugin yesterday, but um, yeah, there's still more left. <laughs> because if I remember correctly, when I started to use some modern JavaScripting libraries in my plugins, I, I found these uh, that I should bundle them with JS libs and uh, there is a really a good or was a tutorial and I think we should remove these uh, from our web page so nobody will find them anymore yeah good yeah thank you thanks Uli all right any other points on the the deprecation of Jenkins of those outdated Jenkins JavaScript libraries All right, thanks, Basel. So next topic we had, Vadek, you wanna take just a brief moment on the user feature flag status report? I don't think it's really necessary at this point. And there is no status report at this point. It's just user okay. feature flag. It's a pull request at the moment just to provide the feature. So if it's not adopted, there is no interest to have any report of this kind of thing again. Got it, okay, thank you. All right, then last topic on the agenda was, is the app bar ready for build actions? Uli, could you give us some, some overview for those of us who may not know what app bar is like me and, and yes. talk further? So maybe I can uh, share my screen. You bet, stop sharing, okay. Okay. I think you see my browser now? Yes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, I think um, what I want to show is that um, recently we, let's go to the, make this a little bit bigger. So uh, I think Tim and Jan proposed uh, some kind of new uh, scheme to, yeah, to, to have some new views uh, that use uh, the sidebar on the left here. So uh, the plugin manager now has a separate sidebar with updates, available plugins, installed plugins, and so on. And a lot of, uh, let's say, managed Jenkins uh, views uh, are using this new scheme. And this scheme is uh, having a new sidebar and having an application bar where you have some buttons to, you know, to change the view or the look and look and feel. And I'm wondering if this concept should be used for build actions as well. So let's have a look at this is one of my builds from yeah from one of my plugins. And we have a lot of summaries here in this screen. And what I would like to know is if if I am, for instance, going to the code coverage results, uh, typically you have a few which shows the code coverage results. And I, this is just an experiment, so uh, it's not really ready. Uh, what I've, uh, a norm, sorry, uh, let's start from the beginning. Normally, if you click into the summary of a build, for instance, we are looking at the test results, Normally, you have the same on the left. You have still the old application or the side panel is the same on the left. 
So I'm wondering if I should change that in the same way as we have done that on the plugin manager. So when I click mutation coverage, I have a new side panel, which shows only the details of my view. So, and this is a question if we should go this way or not. So I'm, I just experimented a little bit with it. But, before that uh, change, I have uh, a tabs here where you can see the overview, you can have the line coverage and so on. I'm using tabs to show different elements of my view. And now I'm wondering if I should uh, rather use this sidebar to show these results. For instance, if I click here on files, uh, then I have only the files and I should click on overview. I see only the overview, though that's not really clear for me if I should go this way or not. And that is uh, yeah, more a little bit a question for Jan and Tim, uh, if we should use that in builds as well. And if we use that in builds, I think we need some guidelines on how to use it, for instance, should I have buttons there for the previous build and the next build? Um, yeah, what else buttons should I have that are common to all plugins? Because when I use this concept in the code coverage plugin, I should use it in the warnings plugin, when we should use it in the tests plugin. So all plugins which show information should yeah use it the same way. And yeah, I'm not sure which way is the correct way. <laughs> So the the action buttons that you've listed there is primary control, hello, and secondary. Those are those buttons that perform some change on things. But this, uh, yeah, okay. This these are just uh, some uh, from the hello world. Uh, I, I've just integrated them. But actually, I would like, for instance, here you normally see the code coverage of the whole project. And I would like to use a, a button to show the coverage of the changed files only. Uh, okay, so, so, so you will click here. Uh, it's not read implemented, but this is my idea to have a, for instance, a list box to uh, a, a button and toggle button where you can select show only the coverage of the changed files or show the coverage of the whole project. Or another thing is when you, let's say, uh, you can see here the line coverage and maybe it's simpler if I have a, a toggle button where you can switch to the branch coverage or the mutation coverage or something like that. So you don't have so many tabs, you just have one tab and you have some other element to select what you actually would like to see. So this is something I'm experimenting so it's yeah it's not really finished so it's i thought it makes sense to discuss it before i start working on it <laughs> otherwise yeah. Uh, yeah. so so for me i've i've recently been using exactly these pages and and have been very deeply happy with the the data i get from them so i'm i'm interested would then this would mean line coverage branch coverage and file coverage in one model would move to the or in one idea would move to the left and be along the sidebar and I would click through yep. them to to get to those so that so that instead of a top level list of tabs it would be immediately the coverage page yep. with coverage data yeah yeah that was the idea especially now I've integrated for instance we have a code coverage from Chacoco uh, it's line and branch coverage and I've also integrated mutation coverage uh, using the same model now and uh, this is a concept I'm using in my warnings plugins as well I have results for check style for find bugs, for PMD etc and it would be simpler if I have them in control in one side panel and show only the results I'm interested. So when I'm looking at code coverage, I want to see only code coverage and no warnings. And if I'm looking into my warnings plugin, I don't want to see the test results. So maybe we can focus more on the details I'm interested in for now when we are using the sidebar. And currently you see the sidebar is very long. It's even longer when I, let's say 
Um, let's see if I have a project which is a little bit longer. So when I'm opening, yeah, it's not longer. I think my plugin is not loaded, my find a warnings plugin. So typically the uh, the sidebar can get very long, so you need even scrolling. And yeah, this is something I would like to avoid. And it would help if I re replace the, th the sidebar with something with, uh, with a special sidebar for my plugins. So I'm not sure if that makes sense or not. So I need a little bit of feedback for that. So maybe this is something we can, yeah, have a look at the next session as well. I think we should. Let's bring it to the next session. I think we could also benefit by by pointing Jan and Tim to the recording of this session so that they could see the, the concept that you were envisioning and your question so that they may be able yeah. to, to prepare and have their thoughts gathered in ready for our next session. Yeah. And, and one thing maybe that's uh, interesting is uh, what's also important for me, which does not work currently, I would like to have the screen uh, of 100% for my plugin. And currently, if I set the size of my frame to 100%, uh, it's an overlay with a button bar. So I think it would be really helpful for plugins if I can say, please let my view fill the whole view, and yeah, but not the bottom here. So I'm not sure if this is an overlay why this is uh, yeah, not calculated correctly here. So these are, I think as a plugin author, I need some advice on how to do special things and we don't have these advices yet. So yeah, maybe this is something we should work on because currently the app bar and these changes all are only applied to the system settings part, which is, yeah, for some people, it's an important part, for, but not for me. And for me, I'm interested in the build results. And we should yeah, spend some time on improving these results as well. I like that. I think that's a great idea. Let's, let's plan it for a, a conversation for our next meeting. Thanks very much. OK. Any other questions here? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Uli. Any other topics that need to be discussed today? All right, thanks everybody.